Okay, so thanks everyone for coming. We have a really uh, interesting and uh, exciting evening uh, planned for everyone. So our first speaker, uh, Luis Montero from Zama. Yeah, so I'm Luis. Uh, I'm a machine learning engineer at Zama. I'm not at all a cryptographer, so I basically I have basic understanding of what everything of you are doing. <laughs> I d still attended the, the workshops, but very interesting stuff. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to talk about uh, what we do at Zama. So Zama is a company focusing on uh, fully homomorphic encryption and different applications of it. And uh, one of them is uh, pr privacy preserving machine learning. So first of all, why would we want uh, privacy preserving machine learning? So as all of you know, a lot of applications now run with AI. So uh, there are a lot of applications in healthcare, for example, like cancer detections and stuff like that. Face recognition is also one of them. Uh, more recently, all the search engines like, um, I don't know, like Google runs large language models, uh, ChatGPT, stuff like that. And uh, one critical thing about all those applications is that uh, the, the enterprises that are running those models actually collect the, the data of the users. And that's something that uh, you might not want. For example, if you have a, I don't know, a cancer detection model, you might not want the company that's doing that to send the data to an insurance company. So this is why we want the model to run in FHE so that it protects, protects the data of the user. So yeah, a first reminder of what fully homomorphic encryption is. I guess most of you are familiar with it. I'm still going to uh, do a brief introduction to it. So basically, if, you want, if you, we take the example of the World Wide Web, so we have a client and a server. The data is encrypted during transport. It's decrypted on the server side. The server does some computation or something with the data. And then some result is returning, returned to the user. The data is always protected during transport. For example, if you think about HTTPS and stuff like that but the data is actually in the clear on the server side. What FHE allows us to do is to keep the data encrypted during the whole process, so even the computation is done on the encrypted data. That allows a lot of use cases like the ones that I talked about, where actually the model, which is actually just the function f that we are applying here, to the encrypted data. So at Zama, we are using uh, TFHE, uh, which allows us to do uh, three basic operations. But those operations are actually all we need to do privacy preserving machine learning. So the first operation that we can do is uh, additions between ciphertext. And then we also have multiplication by constant. And the third one is actually uh, the most interesting one, because it's uh, PBS or table lookup according to which community you are talking to. And it basically allows you to do a table lookup on the data. So this is kind of the same thing as evaluating an univariate function on the data. There are also nice properties for like noise stuff. I won't go into that since, as I said, I'm not a crypto guy. So yeah, so how can we use those properties to do machine learning? And this is like the main topic of the talk. So with what we do at uh, Zama, we are focusing on the inference side of things. All the training is done on clear data, or you could use another method to do privacy preserving training, like uh, federated learning or other methods. What really is our focus at the moment is to do the inference and to provide basic APIs so that data scientists can do this kind of stuff. So yeah, as I said, we had basically three types of operations in uh, TFHE. So we have additions, multiplication, and table lookups. But actually in machine learning, we are mainly doing two operations, which are matrix, matrix multiplications, which can do, be done with uh, additions and uh, multiplications. And then we have table lookups that uh, are actually quite useful to do nonlinearities. So if you are thinking about deep learning models, they are basically just a combination of those operations. So nonlinearities and matrix multiplication. So we have all the tools that we need to actually do machine learning model inference in FHE. 
The only thing is that we have to convert our model. It could be like a tree-based model, it could be a neural network, anything, to a circuit. And if you think about it, like these kind of circuits are very similar to the things that we manipulate when we do deep learning. This is basically a chain of operations, like matrix multiplications and, as I said, activation functions. All right. So more concretely, at Zama, we have a whole stack called Concrete, and uh, we sit on top of the stack, and we provide a library that's called Concrete ML that basically provides all the APIs that someone needs to do machine learning in FHE. The main objective of the library, which is open source, by the way, uh, is to provide all the APIs so that a data scientist can do FHE inference of machine learning models without any prior knowledge in cryptography. So basically, even myself, I have a basic understanding of how TFHE works, but still I'm able to like, develop the library and actually use it. To do this, we took uh, inspiration in uh, well-known uh, machine learning libraries. So scikit-learn is like one of the most basic libraries that you can find to do machine learning. It exposes simple APIs so that anyone can do it. Right? And then we also support uh, more like complex frameworks that do deep learning, like uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow. And we provide APIs that plug onto like, these kind of libraries. So that it's super easy for a data scientist. It doesn't have to relearn everything to do machine learning in FHE. One of the drawbacks of uh, FHE, as we use it, is that we can only do computations on integers. But that's actually not an issue because uh, there is a whole field in machine learning called quantization. And um, this was at first uh, developed for embedded systems where you actually have a lot of constraints on the memory on the system where you are running your model. But all of this uh, literature is actually quite useful for us because since we do everything on integers, then we can take inspiration from what was already done and just apply it to FHE. So for those that don't know what quantization is, it's basically just reducing the bit width of uh, the data. So here you have an example of how it looks like on the, an image of a dog. And actually a lot of uh, machine learning applications right now are based on images. And as you can see, even with a one bit quantization, which is like the most aggressive things that you can do, you can actually always see the dog, right? So the idea is that if we as humans can still see the dog, a deep learning model should be able to also perform nicely on this kind of data. And actually it does. So uh, we provide different levels in concrete ML. Uh, so a lot of uh, support for uh, typical models, like uh, more classic machine learning models, like tree-based models, so decision trees, random forest, and XGBoost. And then also a lot for uh, linear models. And then also, obviously, neural networks. So we have simple APIs where you can have like a simple MLP already done. And then we also provide stuff for data scientists that do a bit more advanced machine learning so that you can come with, a, I don't know, super complicated deep learning model and then convert it to FHE. As I said, the, the main idea is to be really as simple as possible. So here you can see like it takes, I don't know, six, six lines of code to train a model and uh, run it in FHE. So the only difference with the basic APIs of machine learning, as if some of you are familiar with that, is the end bit parameters here, parameter here and the, the executing FHE. So the end bit parameter is used to do the quantization of the model. So under the hood, the model we train on context data, and everything is handled for the user. So it doesn't have to preoccupy itself with any of those considerations. That's a good question. Actually, we don't. Um, I think it would be super complicated to do because then you have like contamination of the model. So if you just train your model with encrypted data, then the model becomes encrypted with the key of the user, which is not a nice property, right? So there are probably other ways to do it, but yeah, at the moment, no. So we provide uh, some examples in the library, and one of them is a classification problem. And what we actually show here is that even with uh, aggressive quantization, for example, 
Here we have a um, floating point model in uh, blue. And we have, uh, the, no, the floating point are the dashed lines. And we have the quantized equivalents in uh, like the, the other line. And what we actually show is that even for like five bits, we actually reach almost the same performance as the normal model, which is a nice property. The only drawback, obviously, is that there is difference time is longer than a normal model, obviously. But then if you stay with low bit width, you still have decent run times. And it's actually, I mean, you can actually run it on a laptop and it works super fine. Same as uh, trees, we have also linear models, basically the same things. The APIs are the same, so it's easy to use. Uh, we do have um, more flexibility on linear models because since we don't have nonlinearities, we don't need a table lookup, and thus we can increase the bit width a bit more. So that has nice properties because then you can do a bit more complex stuff. Here, as you can see, the okay. So here we are comparing scikit-learn models that run on floating point values and concrete ML. The concrete ML ones are those. And as you can see, there are like small quantization artifacts on the decision surface, but they are really small. The only place where they really happen is uh, when they are not like on the support of the data. But actually, if you, you are doing machine learning, for this type of models, you are usually trying to interpolate and not extrapolate, so that's not so much of an issue. We also have um, neural networks. So these are built-ins. Like, uh, you can do them also in like four lines of code. And um, here we can see that we have uh, strong quantization artifacts because we are using a lower bit width, right? But the thing that is interesting is that even with those quantization artifacts, we still don't degrade the performance, the overall performance of the model. So if you take a look at the accuracy, you have very similar results. And then, last and foremost, we have support for custom neural networks. So you can come with a, a model and then just plug it to, a, to concrete ML, and it should work. There are obviously like two type, two different things when you, we are talking about neural networks and quantization. You can do what we call post-training quantization, where you actually take a model that's already trained and try to convert it to low bit width. That's something that works, but there is a more efficient way to do it. And the more efficient way to do it is to either fine tune or return the model, taking into account those constraints, and then you have much better results. But if you satisfy those constraints, then you can just come with your Torch model, plug it into concrete ML, and it will work. We have a lot of examples on, uh, in the library. So we do uh, NIST and C410 showcases, which are image classifications for those of you that don't know. We also have um, an example on how to do sentiment analysis and image filtering on encrypted data. And we are trying to provide more and more examples so that uh, it's easier and easier for data scientists to just come, like take a look, see, OK, so this is super similar to what I know, and then just like copy paste maybe or like adapt everything to their need. So in summary, uh, we use FHE to guarantee privacy at inference time. So this is like the core of the technology. It comes with a constraint that uh, you can only do integral computations. But luckily for us, there is a whole field that already exists on the topic. So we can do like scikit-learn and neural networks super easily. And we package this so that data scientists don't have to worry about those considerations. And they just can use it. And actually, I think you, you guys, even if you didn't do machine learning before, you could be able to use the library. It should be pretty easy. Thanks for your attention. Uh, you can find us uh, on GitHub. We have uh, almost everything open source. We have uh, heavy documentation as well on all those problems. Uh, we are super active on the fhe.org Discord. So if you have any questions, you can also find us there. And we have a uh, hugging face space. And uh, one last thing, sorry. Uh, if you are going to RWC in Tokyo, we will be there as well and we will be representing uh, concrete ML and other libraries. And you have a free invitation with uh, 
this imitation code. Thanks a lot.